All right, welcome back, Physics 40B for Dr. Tenedos class. My name is Armando Avalor, and we're gonna do we're gonna be doing another uh, physics explainer video. This is number 15.65, I believe, and uh, the way this relates to this week's learning objectives is right here. Uh, we're gonna show mathematically how physics principles lead to oscillatory motion. I feel like this is the one that fits mostly for this problem, so let's get right into it. Like I said, 15.65. Uh, just make sure you're doing the right problem. So I'm stressed out. I'm sure you guys are stressed out. So let's ease up with a little joke. Why can't you trust an atom? I'll give you a second. It's because they make up everything. Good talk. All right. Uh, no, for reals now. Uh, so here, go, here's the, here goes the question. So in your first trip to planet X, uh, you bring you happen to take along a 200 gram mass, which is going to be represented by this ball right here. And then you take a 40 centimeter long spring, which is going to be this one, and a meter stick and a stopwatch but since we're like in the 21st century we're going to use the iphone and um basically what you want to do is that you you basically one night you suspend the spring from the ceiling and you measure it with your meter stick and then you time it with your phone and when you put it on there you see that the ball stretches out the spring by 31.2 centimeters and then you pull the mass down another 10 centimeters and then release it with the stopwatch you find that 10 oscillations take about 14.5 seconds and using this information, they want you to calculate the force of gravity. So here's what we do know. So the force acting on the ball is going to be equal to mass times gravity. We know the mass of the ball. We don't know gravity. So that's good. And then another force we know is the force of the spring. And we know that these two forces have to be equal to each other because it's stationary. And like they're, you know, like the balls, it's not going anywhere, right? Like it's just going up and down. So they have to equal to each other. Uh, Mg and the spring constant times the distance x is the distance right so we know that x is 31.2 centimeters and then we know the time per period t is represents a period um it's going to be 14.5 seconds divided by 10 because it says down here 10 oscillations take 14.5 seconds so one oscillation will take about 1.45 seconds uh, since these forces are equal to each other we that means we can set them equal to each other and then we can solve for g just like this, right? So g is equal to kx divided by mass. Um, right, that's all we have to do. We just have to plug in values. Uh, no. Unfortunately, we don't know the value of the k. We don't know spring constant. So, so it's time to do some algebra. Uh, plugging in the values that we know, we know that g is equal to... Um, oh, I'm just sorry, sorry. So this is our... Fuck, sorry. This is our equation. Uh, and then these are the values we know. We know that the, uh, the distance that the spring stretches, this is in meters, so I just divided it by uh, 100. And then we know the mass of the ball, which is 200 grams, so divide that by 1,000, you get 0.2 kilograms. Uh, and then when you divide and multiply out, you get, a, you get this, G is equal to 1.56K. Now all that's left is to find what K equals, and then we're all done. So once you get to this point, um, it gets tricky. So we know the equation for a period of anything oscillating is equal to this. So it's going to be period is equal to 2 pi times the square root of the mass divided by the spring constant. So we need to rewrite this in terms of k because we don't know k. And then once you rewrite it, it's going to look something like this. I'm not going to go over the algebra because you, uh, it's going to take too long. So then now that we got all of our equations, I'm just going to restate all of them. We started with this one. This is the period equation. We rewrote it and we got this one, which is the, the constant. It's rewritten for the constant. And then we also know, we also had this one from the previous step. The g is equal to 1.56k. And then if you're, if you've been paying attention, you can see where this is going. We have two k's. We could do a system of equations. Uh, and then basically just eliminate k like we don't even have to worry about it anymore so if we set them equal to each other you got to solve this one for k so k is equal to g divided by 1.56 um and then you set them equal to each other and then you literally just multiply 1.56 to the other side and then you get this monstrosity right here uh and then you just plug in your values you know that the mass is 0.2 kilograms you plug that in right over there the time uh the period is 1.5 1.45 seconds you plug it into your calculator and then your gravity con your gravity force should be about 5.86 meters per second squared. And that's it. I guess we really didn't need K, did we? Thank you.